again, Peabody here. Today, Sherman and I will be in the hands of our receiver. You mean we're bankrupt, Mr. Peabody? The receiver I refer to is an integral part of the telephone. The year is 1873, the place is Boston University, and the man we're going to meet is the world-famous scientist and inventor, Alexander Graham Bell. As usual, the Wayback Machine operated perfectly, teleporting us into Alexander Graham Bell's laboratory. Eureka! I'm finished. What is it, Mr. Bell? Did you just invent something? Yes, a boon to all mankind. Look. Why, it's just a cracker. Not just a cracker, an Alexander Graham cracker. We proceeded to put the cracker to a severe test. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's good. Tell me, Mr. Bell, have you started work on the telephone yet? What's a telephone? A device that reproduces sound or speech at a distant point by means of electricity. You're out of your head. It can't be done. Of course it can. And you're going to invent it. We kept the midnight oil burning that night while Alexander Graham Bell drafted plans for the telephone. There we are, all done. That doesn't look like a telephone. Well, actually, it's a picture of me leading an orchestra. I thought I'd call it Alexander's Ragtime Bell. What do you think? I think you'd better invent the telephone. Sherman, I'm afraid you and I will have to take drastic action. The Peabody Construction Company went into action. We built a telephone booth for every room in the building, hoping that Bell would get the hint and install telephones. However, we were in for a disappointment, for the great man entered the nearest booth, tacked up a curtain, and said, I'm voting for McKinley. How about you? I didn't know it then, but two Russian football players who had transferred to Boston University were at that very moment on the threshold of also discovering the telephone. It happened during scrimmage practice. Hi, Korshikov, I just happened to think of an idea wonderful. So Charles Srimsky, listen, his method of talking to people over long distance. I have here a small recording of my voice, right? Right. I put recording into football. Is also right? Is also right. Okay, you run to other end of field. Is good idea, Korshikov? Is great idea, Rimsky! The following Saturday afternoon, Boston University faced its arch-rival, La Hoya Tech. For three quarters, the teams battled on even terms, neither one being able to score. And that's when Rimsky and Korsakov went into action. It's time for big play. Korsakov, you call time out while I go make recording. Time was called for 45 minutes. Great game, isn't it, Mr. Bell? Yes, I'm enjoying it immensely. Play was resumed as Rimsky trotted back onto the field. Okay, it's all set for big play. I throw long pass to Korsakov. Korsakov, when football is caught, you take out the record and play it, right? Right. Boston University came out of the huddle and lined up. The ball was snapped back to Rimsky, who faded deep behind the line of scrimmage. Just when it seemed as though the Russian quarterback would be dropped for a huge loss, he unleashed a prodigious throw. Ninety-nine yards away, Korsakov gathered the ball in. I dream of genius with the light brown hair. Realizing he had played the wrong side of the record, Korsakov quickly flipped it over. Korsakov, this is Rimsky. You got ball? Good. Listen carefully. You are standing on one yard line, right? Right. Okay, turn around, take one step over goal line and score touchdown. Do not pass goal, do not collect 200 rubles for straight to jail. Boston University won the game and seconds later the stands were buzzing with the rumor that a method of long distance communication had been invented. Hmm, that's very interesting. Also very alarming. Mr. Bell, unless you get busy at once and invent the telephone, I'm afraid somebody else will do it. You're right. I've been an incredible fool. Quick, we must return to my laboratory. For the next 24 hours, Alexander Graham Bell slaved over his workbench. Juan, but at peace with himself, he opened the door and called us in. Congratulate me, I've done it. That's wonderful, Mr. Bell. Here, what do you think of it? But th that's a baseball. Yes. You see, you make a miniature recording of the voice and stuff it inside the ball. Then you hit it to someone in the outfield and... Gee, Mr. Peabody, will he ever invent the telephone? Yes, Sherman, but only after much hard work. I suppose that's why Ernest Hemingway wrote a book about him. What was it called? Uh, For Whom the Bell Toils. <laughs> <laughs>